Welcome, welcome, welcome to the official launch of the Meta Content book by Ashgan Tashvia. It is a delight to be with you all here today. So wherever you are in the world, I know we have very many different time zones. I am pretty sure for a couple of people, it's 3 a.m. or 1 a.m. I'm just looking at the, the eyes <laughs> of everyone here. Uh, so get comfortable. We are going to have you know quite an exciting time together. Um, and it's just such a privilege to be hosting you. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Arya Chidesi. Uh, and as uh, on behalf of the Ingenesis group here, it's just a delight to be with you all here today to celebrate the launch of Ashgan Tashvir's fourth book, uh, Meta Content. Awesome. So a, a bit about today, just a reminder that we are recording this uh, and we are going live publicly. So please feel free to uh, put your camera on or off as, as you wish. Uh, and keep yourself on mute as we, we go through today. We are going to be hearing, obviously, from Ashkan himself, uh, as well as we have about 14 speakers that you're going to listen from, um, and I'm extremely excited to hear what they have to share as they've gone through the book and what impact it's made on, on their life as well. Okay, so, yeah, look, without further ado, uh, let me jump in. Um, to this. So first and foremost, I think many of you already know Ashkan as work, and that's why you're here. But some of you may be completely new. Yeah, I was actually just having a few texts that uh, people have uh, invited different others. And so I'd like to take a moment to introduce Ashkan to you, uh, for those of you watching in and for those of you who do not know him. Ashkan is someone who advocates that the antidote to social disintegration and hum humanity's challenges lie in the integrity of us all as individuals, how we choose to be. So through bringing together science, technology, and philosophy, he delves into the fundamental fragments of reality, articulates complexities, and supports others in mastering the art of sense-making and transformation. His mission is to uncover the underlying principles and enlightened approach to personal, and collective well-being, prosperity, and meaning. And in particular, he operates across these four layers, investment, business venture building, technology, and most importantly, philosophy, particularly being interested in human performance, behavior, and leadership. So with over a decade in the industry as a multidisciplinary philosopher, entrepreneur, he has a passion for integrating the science, technology, business principles, and people. He's also a technology leader. He's an experienced analyst, architect, and design-minded developer across multiple technology platforms, uh, including a Genesis.com. He excels in investing in the right startups and teams as a parallel entrepreneur. And he is deeply committed, communicated, uh, sorry, deeply committed to communicating complex, innovative, and at times provoking ideas, as I'm sure you're here today, acting as a bridge between scalable technology-based businesses and their customers and users. He thrives on the process and results of transformation where economic resources and people are brought together to create value and solve humanity's pain points through entrepreneurship. During his tenure at Ingenesis, he has contributed to, guided and encouraged leaders, coaches, teams and organizations to adopt radical new approaches leading to higher performance, innovation, effectiveness, efficiency, ultimately the fulfillment for both enterprises and the people inside them. Yeah, some of you which are here. He, he brought up and is known for noble discourses such as the being discourse, many of you are familiar with, as well as here today is presenting the meta content discourse. And he is looking at core concepts like deconstruction and reconstruction, uh, the methodology of transformation, how do we transform, coaching methods and maximizing productivity, performance, effectiveness. And what I'm excited about is this introduction of the nested theory of sense-making, which you'll hear more about in a moment. He looks at the purpose-driven economy, lean governance and multi-dimensional leadership to name a few. And his main interests are around social integrity, human potential, transformation, sense making freedom of speech, liberty, ethics, and meaning. 
So he has created these two frameworks. Uh, again, many of you would be familiar with the Being Framework, which is a radical paradigm and series of tools that support transforming cultures in organizations and helping leaders to amplify the effective exercise of leadership and also the Genesis Framework, an iterative approach to building scalable ventures from idea to scale. To scale. So today, as I've mentioned, Ashkan has now published four books alongside some other publications. These books are Being, you can see them over here, uh, Being, Human Being, Becoming the Emergence of Being, and today, Meta Content. So with that, I again am delighted to be with you all. Let me pass it over to Ashkan Tashvir. Thank you. Thank you very much, Arya. Um, thank you. Thank you. So I would like to acknowledge every single of you. Um, I know it takes something to make the time to attend um, a session on philosophy. So um, I, I deeply find it as a privilege to um, be able to serve. So you're creating this opportunity for me. So I'm going to convey my gratitude. Thank you very much. So let me start. I'm, I'm going to give you a kind of an overview of what meta content is and why it's important so that we can have a better sense of um, the discourse. And obviously then the, the nested theory of sense making, or to be more exact, the model or structure that the nested theory of sense making provides. Now, as I've touched on it just now, um, it's a philosophical concept. But the moment that we say philosophy, we use the word philosophy, immediately we may put, put whatever is going to be discussed in this kind of realm that it's not very accessible or it's not very um, um, useful in the day-to-day -day life. But I would think encourage all of us, uh, for the sake of the argument today, um, relate to philosophy um, as, and particularly the philosophy that I'm developing, as something that is so relatable to our day-to-day -day life. And um, I, would, I would call it meaningful conversation, having meaningful conversation. So, we are confused. We are indeed confused. Now, um, sometimes it's going, we're going to find it hard to accept or acknowledge this vulnerability. Um, but that's an axiomatic law in this universe and that applies to us human beings particularly. Um, we are confused. But what is the source of our confusion? The source of our confusion is uh, our vulnerability in understanding things, knowing things. We come to this world not much knowing what, what is going on. And um, this, this vulnerability, we, we can call it the, one of the biggest vulnerabilities of all, is something that we find quite hard to acknowledge and leave up that from that viewpoint. But the moment that we acknowledge that, then uh, lots of things are going to change. But so let's let me elaborate a little bit more on um, what I mean by this confusion and um, where it stems from. We have um, the, um, we have our sensory abilities, and there's a lot of limitations to our sensory abilities. Yeah, so we have um, our, uh, there is limit, there are limitations to our perceptual structure um, as well. We can not see sometimes the things that are so apparent and obvious, so close to eyes, uh, to us. And there are times that we can see the things that are not even there. We can be delusional. So and then we go to the next, uh, next part, similar to our uh, the limitation to our sensory abilities and perceptual structure, there are also limitations to our um, rationality, our conceptual structure. So we would like to think that 
uh, rationality is the solution to many of our, or all of our problems. Well, um, if we if we take a purely radical humanistic approach and we think that our rationality is enough, well, we may um, go down that path. But the the reality of the matter is most of the mistakes that we have made so far, individually or collectively, very likely we made those mistakes. And I, by mistake, I don't mean um, objective mistakes. The what you consider. Uh, mistakes in in retrospect, looking back into your experience of life, were made um, tapping into your rationality. So basically, our rationality, individually or collectively, also not always going to work in our favor. So, and that that's exactly the source of epistemic humility in getting humble that. Um, you know, these limitations wouldn't let us to fully grasp the totality of whatever is going on there, or what I call gaining um, authentic awareness. But at the same time, um, the existence, life, doesn't really care. You know, life sometimes even harshly demands that we know stuff. So you can't bring this excuse that um, you don't have a sense of or you don't understand gravity well enough because if you jump from a, a, a tenth floor then there's going to be consequences so in another word when it comes to the axiomatic laws whether they're physical or metaphysical um the reality doesn't really care about our opinion so we'd better to acknowledge these limitations but then try our best, tapping into multiple different ways to examine reality, um, to gain as authentic as possible awareness of matters. So, now in that, um, we really respect, in most part, science. And, and obviously, when it comes to the material reality, um, science is going to be the way to go we found this particular way of examining reality and um, we can rely on it in, in great part when it comes to material reality. Uh, we would love to think that science is going to provide answers to our all um, problems, but as I've mentioned, there are areas um, that then requires us to engage in dialogue and that, uh, tap into dialectic have discussion, come to consensus. For example, you're sitting with your friends over the weekend and then you're going to decide what to do for fun. So science is not going to be extremely useful there. Or for example, um, how you're going to build an intimate relationship, get close to someone and enjoy that as part of the experience of your life. Whether you have potato chips tonight while watching Netflix or not. Like, Yes, science can provide some information to us, some knowledge to us, but at the end of the day, we need other, we need to tap into other uh, tools um, so that then we can make these simple decisions. Yeah? For example, axiology, what you find valuable uh, in comparison with other things. So metaphysics, axiology, ethics, and so basically... Science is going to be very, very useful, particularly if um, it, it is open to um, collaborate with this other realm. So in, in the book, Meta Content, in creating the whole con the context, before I discuss the Meta Content discourse, um, I'll go through all of these conf uh, conversations, the confusion, uh, the invisible, the parts that we don't see, but we should guess that there are things that we don't see. We need to come to the acknowledgement of our um, limitations. And um, also then we talked about authentic awareness that life demands us even sometimes even harshly so that we know stuff. And um, and then, yeah, you know, we discuss science because that if we are going to value authentic awareness, then science is one of the greatest ways that we can um 
understand and develop conceptions of various different fragments of material reality, particularly. So, but then we said that while necessary, it may not be enough. Uh, so we go through all of these things in Meta Content Book, and we discuss consciousness and particularly the the theory um, of suffering uh, within the realm of consciousness. Because especially nowadays with the advancement of AI or algorithmic learning, machine learning, we collapse intelligence with consciousness. Because intelligence is this ability that it can um, support or solve logical problems, um, recognize the patterns and learn from that and solve certain problems. Consciousness is way broader than just uh, intellect. For example, our ability to feel, uh, interpret things, and interpret the emotions and make it mean something and feel something. Yeah, so basically, um, the, it's so easy for us to collapse our intelligence and uh, and consciousness and you know, the totality of consciousness because with us human beings, these two are quite intertwined. Um, but but the moment that you start not only interacting but but actually developing AI, then you see how hard it is to teach the AI, um, train the models to actually um, be conscious. Like uh, I'm I'm not pretty sure if we get to the stage that uh, any AI machine can actually have consciousness. But um, so. Now, so exactly um, in, in uh, exactly because we're living now in the era that many many of my peers with the background in technology are trying to develop uh, artificial intelligence um, systems to actually not only help us making making sense of things better, but some they try to support you or persuade you so that you can you outsource your sanity and outsource your sense making to the machines and there is tremendous amount of danger that i can see in that so then in that case they're not going to be just the tools that we use but they're going to get us addicted and decrease our ability in in authentic sense making, the concern that was shared by philosophers, other philosophers like Nietzsche or Martin Heidegger, when they talked about authenticity, so it it can really lead us to to the concern that Kant, the German philosopher, had for you to be das man, to be just one of the crowd, one of the crowd, be one and 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 succumb to this conformity. And be standardized. And again, like when, for example, Nietzsche talks about Ubermensch or we can say hyperhuman being. Um, so he, he was envisioning that we get to this stage. Ubermensch is this person who, who can transcend uh, the conformity and uh, this societal, societal um, pressure, the force. So now, in, in saying all that, in order for us to fulfill our intentions in life and, uh, or better to say, in, increase the probability of us fulfilling our intentions, uh, live a well-lived life, and and be richer in, in our share of reality. It's like we are quite concerned sometimes with how much share we have in this company or this asset or things like that, our bank account. But what is the your share of reality? If you are a mirror, how much of this um, um, reality out there you are reflecting? And um, yeah, the more you expose yourself to various different fragments of reality, ideas, experiences, your share of reality is going to be expanded. You're going to be richer. So, therefore, uh, sense making is not only a luxury. It's not something desirable. It's actually something that it's so necessary, no matter what you're up to in life. So, now, 
So when it comes to the meta content discourse, as I said, like I refer to all there is content. Yeah, so it can be textual content, it can be video content, it can be the dog, the cat, me, you, what we say, and and so on. So, so it's quite a cluster word that is quite broad. So, now when I talk about meta content, I mean um, the 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 underlying structure that it helps us understand or make sense of that content yeah so i call it the intellectual substrate for sense making when we talk about meta content i give you an example if you are um, a scientist now when you say scientists there are so many different uh, types of scientists or the people uh, and people tap into various different paradigms in science but if you're the scientist that you are but obsessed with empirical data, you're the positivist, for example, um, and and you've trained yourself in the meta content of um, empiricism. So you may fail to appreciate art, or um, um, you, be in, may, you may not tap into this other meta content that is required in order for you to interpret the literacy, understand symbolism, enjoy reading Harry Potter, enjoy watching Game of Thrones or um, reading uh, religious scriptures. Yeah, so therefore uh, the meta content is this intellectual substrate that's going to help us interact, consume, generate um, various different content. Now. Many of the collapses that we see in our um, society is actually us trying to interact with some content, tapping into an in, in not very compatible meta content. And, and, and this, this doesn't only lead to division, separation, confl unnecessary conflict, but, but to the point that blood, uh, blood is being shed. So we engage in various sort of violence activities and we legitimize that because we fundamentally think that we are different at core. While um, I really want to challenge that uh, the conversation around we are different, I don't think that we are different. We mostly, we have different preferences. So our different preferences should not lead us to think that we are fundamentally different. See, for example, like if Ariel likes to have pizza and I have, I like, I prefer to have pasta, then I'm not going to say that I'm a pizza loving person and I identify as that. And Aria goes, I am a, no, I am a pasta um, uh, loving person. And then we are going to be in different categories. And this, this uh, at the end of the day is leading to identity politics, division. And ironically, when we talk about inclusion, let's say, we ended up creating various different groups of people that they have created exclusive clubs and they're not going to let others in. So under the message of inclusivity and diversity, we actually are separating ourselves and we're creating unlimited growing number of groups yeah, so basically, then um, when when it comes to the meta content discourse, um, uh, while every single person has their own um, personalized um, individualistic meta content, but we should acknowledge that there are dominant established um, ideologies and um, schools of thoughts that they provide you with meta content they they propose meta content and these meta contents are in, in influencing your meta content whether you are conscious of it or not like when you say i think or my opinion is this is this or that then you should perhaps ask yourself really is it me thinking like this or there were some opinion makers who actually created this opinion for me and i consciously or unconsciously adopted that so, um, yeah, so, so the idea is 
when you are more robust and you develop your sense of developing your meta content, deconstructing your meta content, and then going into these layers that I I explain in the nested theory of sense making, there's these seven layers, which obviously we don't want to go through each and every of them. When you look into them, then it's going to support you to make sense of yourself better or your existing meta content. And also it's going to help you uh, develop more robust and accurate, authentic understanding of the existing meta content uh, or the meta content that are being proposed by this ism and that ism, like feminism, capitalism, neoliberalism, the mandate for uh, leadership, um, conservative promised document 2025 by the conservatives in the U.S., or on the contrary, the the, the work that United Nations uh, has done in their 2030 um, sustainability plan, or what World Economic Forum, Klaus Schwab, and their friends are trying to do. So basically, there are all these forces, there's all these different uh, ideologies, movements, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, each of them are proposing um, some sort of meta content. Now, if you are unable to decode, decipher these meta contents that are basically there and your own, your own, and how to deconstruct and reconstruct yours and refine yours, you are going to be susceptible to manipulation. You're going to be coerced. You're going to gradually, especially with the advance of the technology. You're going to outsource your sanity. You're going to let the AI to make sense of things for you. So while many of my peers, they actively try to uh, develop technologies, uh, I've used my familiarity with technology to actually support human being not be that dependent on the technologies so that they can make sense of the work. So that's exactly where the meta content discourse and particularly the nested theory of sense making comes to play. Um, you, you are encouraged through the model to look into what things are, your cognitive maps, how things work, your mental models, your narratives, how you interpret the events, what you hear in the news, et cetera, et cetera. And um, look into a domain, try to understand various different paradigms within a domain. Let's say, for example, science, we have interpretism, we have constructivism, we have positivism, then we have all of these isms. Uh, can you look into something from multiple different paradigm and, and see which one may be more suitable for what basically you're trying to achieve? So in order for us to um, un un understand whatever is going on uh, in the world, or basically we need to look into the existing meta content and then shape ours and that's going to uh, make us more robust in the sense that we cannot be coerced coerced manipulated and and basically and i was going through like these some of these layers that we had and i hope that that made sense so in the, it's now well documented and obviously you can look into the book but the idea is like i said um, it's not me making these things complicated um, I mean, no place to make things complicated, but it's the life itself that it's complicated. And all I did or I attempted to do in this body of work is um, I've tried to encapsulate some good part of this complexity by providing a structure uh, through the nested theory of sense making so that then you can look into matters, ideas, different var various parts of reality and deconstruct them, try to understand identify the parts that are misconstructed or they're not working or they're not serving you or not, they're not serving us and attempt to um, reconstruct um, and basically that's it. So now, so I would like to, lastly, I would like to link this to pre this meta content discourse to my previous body of work, the being discourse, the being framework and um, tools associated with that, like being profile. So being framework was um, um, the attempt to map out the meta content of human performance. So I took the domain, that's a keyword, the domain of human performance. I've looked into the existing 
paradigms within that uh, domain, like behavioralism, CBT, personality type theory. And I've tried to, not in detail, you know, I'm not an expert in all of them, but from a philosophical perspective, I've tried to look into the parts that are misconstructed or not well constructed, the parts that were not safe serving in reality, in practical sense. And, and then I've tried to refine certain parts through providing narratives, philosophical narratives, providing pieces in mental models, how things can be done, including looking coaching capacities uh, with the help of others in my team. And then um, looking into like uh, creating the ontological model of the being framework, which basically is 31 different qualities of human being. We call them aspects of being. For each, we develop distinction so basically that uh, to support a person to adopt those as part of their cognitive map. So um, that's basically how this body, uh, body of work is related to my previous body of work. And if you want to zoom out, it's like the meta content discourse is showing you behind the scene or how I contextualized it in human performance. And in the book, in chapter nine, we go through the nested theory of sense making. Chapter eleven of the book, it then it supports you to see how you can contextualize and or le leverage the nested theory of sense making in making sense of whatever you find important, or in you know whatever uh, content you're creating in your career. Um, then you can basically use the chapter eleven and. Uh, make sense of whatever it is and communicate it hopefully to others that's basically all there is awesome so thank you thank you again i'll pass it to you aria you can go from here thank you ashkan awesome everyone so let's just take a few moments yeah to just let that digest yeah let that digest start putting down what's there for you um but yeah so now and by the way if there were any gaps in that where to go go purchase meta content book and it will fill in all the gaps okay very good so without further ado i'd like to introduce our guest speakers for today let me start with the one and only the editor of the book but not only this book but all of the previous books beforehand uh federa pim over to you federa Thank you, Aria. It was almost as though those technical issues were meant to happen um, to remind us about the need to be human first and foremost, isn't it? Um, I'd like to start by congratulating you, Ashkan, on the launch of this, your fourth book in four years, no less. I am truly honoured and privileged to have worked closely with you to shape this book and to have been part of the journey, uh, your journey as an author from day one. The release of meta content is timely. With so much going on in the world that impacts us all and so much noise around them from various sources, making sense of matters has never, or authentically making sense of matters, I should say, has never been more critical to ensure that our conception is as close as possible to the truth. Working on this book made me reflect on how we made sense of things pre-internet when I was at uni, uh, books and journal articles borrowed from the library were the only references for projects. And before that, a set of Encyclopedia Britannica took pride of place in our family home. Yes, I am that old. <laughs> um, it took considerable effort to make sense of things, far more than today when all we need to do is Google something to find the answers that we seek. The problem is we've become lazy. Um, most don't venture beyond the search results on page one. And then on the other hand, we can also so easily get lost down that rabbit hole and still be none the wiser, even if we think we are. I, I see so many applications for this new structured way to conduct any meta-analysis. Um, 
Imagine how it could support entrepreneurs, for example, to go even deeper when working through the Genesis Framework's core value quadrant. Consider how much more they could deconstruct the current landscape, such as their perception of their competitors and the stories they're telling themselves about their own value proposition. Even something as simple as breaking things down when you feel stressed can transform how you relate to being stressed and empower you to move forward rather than fight, flight or freaks. Last but not least, to produce a book takes the combined effort of a team. I'd like to acknowledge Eric Cook for his expertise and care throughout the typesetting process, Odette Abrenica for her amazing artwork, um, Caroline New and Time and Hook for their support with the proofreading, and all of you early readers for your helpful critique and suggestions. They were really fantastic. So thank you very much. Uh, thanks, Aria, for this opportunity. Thank you, Federa, and thank you for all of the hard work behind the scenes, the endless hours. Thank you. Okay, so now let me move forward to John Lowe. Uh, some and many of you know of him. Uh, it's been mentioned in previous books, but unfortunately we don't have John Lowe. He's dealing with his, his health issues. So I would like to read um, an excerpt of the foreword. Um, so for those of you who don't know, John Lowe co-designed the initial versions of the Being Profile. He has an extensive study and research background in pure mathematics logic, philosophy, and the history and philosophy of science. So in the book, he, he speaks about Ashgan um, in this way. He says, it takes an exceptional human being to tackle a work of this kind and fulfill the purpose of making our civilization's accumulated wisdom, knowledge, and understanding available to a wide audience. Over the last few years, I've had a number of long heart to, long heart, -to -heart chats with Ashgan that have allowed me to delve deeply into a broad spectrum of topics encompassing our life experiences, people, and the world. From these talks, I found that Ashkan's drive, passion, and desire to empower others is not an accident. He has lived a life of intense challenges that the vast majority of us can't imagine. And then he leaves a message to each of us as readers. Um, he says, this book covers a vast body of humanity's intellectual heritage, yet its most significant benefits come from practice. That is when you apply the nested theory of sense-making in your life as you live it in the world. For this reason, it is important that you approach reading the book by concurrently looking at your own experiences and how the nested theory could be applied in your everyday life to provide a deeper understanding that will strengthen your relationship with reality. This in turn will allow you to harness your courage to open up opportunities to discover the type of power that alters the world. The intellectual approach of this work is likely to hit a mental pain barrier. For instance, this phenomenon occurs when studying pure mathematics or consequential philosophers such as Ludwig Wittgenstein, who torture language to communicate the depths of wisdom and understanding they discovered in their work. This mental pain comes from physically building new neural pathways, rewiring layers in the frontal cortex of your brain to eventually be able to process reality in a more complete, accurate, and thus more complex way. It's a journey that takes time. Another reason to apply the work is the nature of human existence itself. For the world continuously unfolds and changes and our being in the world also alters. We are never done with making sense of it all and finding meaning. This book demonstrates the folly of looking for answers to life's quandaries to be spoon fed to us, collecting a set of recipes, tips and formulas for success or seeking silver bullets to fix our insufficiencies in the face of the world. In the manner of a consumable product that will magically leave us enlightened and successful. So ultimately, the value you gain as a reader of this book is proportional 
for how you look at your sense making and your being in your own life telling the truth about telling the truth to yourself about your life exactly as you live it and importantly sharing your insights with others in dialogue and noticing what arises so i thank you again for john lowe again he wishes he could be here um and i'm yeah pleased to share his message you can also find that in the forward okay fantastic let us move on so um in enrique we wanted to have him share unfortunately he couldn't stay um but i if you don't know of him enrique uh, co-hosts the being framework leadership foundation series on youtube and on in genesis platform um so i'm just going to share with you the the link to that it's a free course and they are continuously releasing episodes each and every week uh, so many of you listening to those would be familiar with Enrique um, and his work. But uh, next, I'd like to introduce Anthea Stavanovic. Uh, she's an experienced business consultant. Over to you, Anthea. Ah, thank you so much. Um, firstly, congratulations, Ashkan, and the whole team for what you've created. It's truly, truly brilliant. Um, and I actually had to write down because I was getting really emotional when, when I was thinking about what I wanted to say. So I actually wrote some stuff down. Um, but I wanted to say it, before I talk about the book, just how much gratitude I have for being a part of this community and how much it means to me. It's truly an honor, but it's really shaped, um, the, the last kind of few years for me and, and who I'm becoming and and that's huge and I think that's that's the whole point of the work so I really wanted to share that um at the moment I'm part of a program called being mastery it's a 12-month program some of you may know it but that that is really having a huge impact on me and, and we do we you know we're looking at uh we're trying to make sense of uh, how we're being and and human beings and uh meta content has been introduced in that program as this other layer and it's and it's giving us a whole other layer and context to to look at things and and much more understanding um so that there, there are a lot of connections to all of ashkan's work which is really amazing for for you as the person receiving it to be able to make those connections and experience it uh, kind of firsthand uh, with the book, I'm partway through the book, and I think just listening to John Lowe's um, um, excerpt that Aria read, it it really hit home again because I'm reading the book and I'm literally um, experiencing it. I am looking up definitions and I'm contemplating, and and um, it it's really been an amazing experience. And the word that I I put down was mind blowing. It's been a mind blowing experience to to read this book and and I truly think and I don't say it lightly but this is a book that will shape and change humanity for the better and I I really want it to be disseminated to literally every person on this planet because I think that it's that important um for you know Ashkan has this like uncanny ability to take some things that are so complicated and then wrap it up in a way and deliver it in a way that it's actually easy for us to make sense of it and to understand it. And I think that's one of his unique gifts uh, that he's contributing to the world. Um, for me personally, uh, I feel like you've taken all of the things that I've thought about in my entire life, all of the things that I've been contemplating and kind of wrap them up in, in this beautiful package um, and then presented it in a, in a way that that I've been able to read and to understand. And, and it's really, even though I'm only partway through, but changing my uh, perceptions and conceptions of, of things. Um, I've, I've had so many light bulb moments just going through it. And it, it makes me really emotional because it's that powerful. And it's really from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for this work. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anthea. Yeah, there's a lot you shared that deeply resonated. Thank you for sharing that. 
Okay, I'd next like to introduce Lucy Faulkner, who is the General Manager of Being Profile. Over to you, Lucy. Thank you, Aria. Um, first, to acknowledge to Ashkan for this book. Um, and I'm so grateful to have the opportunity to work with you daily um, and to call you my friend. So it's a privilege to be able to speak here. The question, how do we make sense of the world? Um, this is a question that I never asked myself so clearly. I, I guess I had a glimpse of it, um, but I believe that the questions we ask shape the life that we live and the experience that we have in life. So this question, like what is all the information, all the experiences and the meaning I have accumulated throughout the years that has allowed me to interpret interpret the world as I do, to make the choices I make, to care for the things I care about. The way I've answered this in the past is how I'm being. Um, this is the work that I've been doing with the being framework in the last few years. But today with meta content, I feel I have a different layer to that questioning and to the answers that I'm coming up with. I said to you before, Ashkan, that I find this book both humbling and encouraging. Humbling because to be able to honor everything that I don't know, how I relate to the invisible, that's one of the my favorite chapters in the book, and the mystery that comes with this invisible, and how can I be with that? And then encouraging because I know, I now understand, that I can take this approach in life of being a truth seeker and that I can attempt to understand and transform my meta content to see new possibilities in life, to achieve different results and to unlock some of the barriers to feeling the life that I want um, and a fulfilling life for myself and the people around me. I want to add this, that as a trained psychologist that really struggled trying to understand all the different theories and paradigms that there was being taught to me, to have in one book some of the most critical contributions of different thinkers and approaches is something I take my hat off to you, Ashkan, and the way you've done it. For us to be able to understand it, the way you integrate and critically thought through each of these to explain this to us as readers is in itself an amazing contribution. One of my key takeaways from this book is we cannot be effective in a world we don't understand enough. And I am left with the question of how do I relate to what I know and what I don't know? Of course, I don't know the answer, but I'm, I'm committed to continue to discover this in the work I do with you and the work that we do as a community around the Being Profile. So thank you. Um, I look forward to continuing to learn and understand this. And I can't wait to hear what all of the people here think of this book once they have the chance to read it. Thank you, Lucy. And so very shortly, um, Lucy and Ashkan are actually flying to Chile, um, launching the Spanish version of the Human Being book, which is being launched by a renowned editor called JC Saez Editor. So we're quite excited. Um, yeah, and that's all about to happen as well. So with that, um, I actually have John Smallwood, who is our principal coach of the Ingenesis Coach Academy. Uh, he couldn't make the, the timings as, as we had all of the trip and everything. So I'm just going to share something that he prepared earlier. Good morning, everyone. This is John Smallwood, and I'm the uh, coach principal at the Ingenesis Coach Academy. And I'm really delighted to be here today to actually congratulate Ashkan on the launch of his latest book. Um, it's been a, a long journey getting to this uh, book, but in, in many ways, it's pretty amazing that this is the, the fourth book that Ashkan has released in such a really short space of time. And I've just noticed along the way the difference um, in, as each book is, each one has progressed. Um, this one, I think, is going to be a very special um, received. It's a very special book in the community as well. I think it's going to be incredibly valuable. Um, it goes a little bit deeper and I think there's going to be uh, 
I think this one is the icing on the cake to, to some extent. And uh, I really love how it's followed on from being a human being and becoming. And uh, this latest book is something pretty special. So just congratulations, Ashkan and the team. I think it's an amazing achievement. Um, I really, truly hope that you get the, the full recognition that you deserve, especially for the work that you've done and, and all of the time, energy and effort that you, your family have sacrificed and put into this. And uh, just congratulations. Um, I know that you're off to uh, South America in in very short space of time. And for the for the, for you know the, again for the the launch of the the Spanish uh, version of human being over there, and uh, I think this is just the very beginning of a new era uh, for you. And I wish you well. I wish I could have been there, and I had a prior engagement for a long time. But I wish I could have been there with you to celebrate this. But I just really hope that you get the true recognition that you deserve. And congratulations, well done. Thank you. Awesome. So now let me introduce Dr. Anna Carr. She's based in Canberra and she's a leadership coach and a facilitator. Over to you, Anna. Hey, no, thanks, Aria. Good morning, everybody. And hello, Ashkan. <laughs> um, I want to say three things. First of all, about Ashkan as an author. So Ashkan is a connoisseur of ontology. He's a master of synthesis and he's a disciple of rigor real rigor and Ashkan is not easy or not always at ease and that's in front or in the face of his extraordinary vision his for, for us for, for humanity for, for the world um his intention in this book is to provide a constructive framework for deconstruction and to interrogate and bridge the social disintegration that he's already talked about this morning. So it's a world facing a lot of um, uncertainty, disharmony, not to mention the confusion. So in the second thing is how I plan to use this book. I'm not going to just read it and forget it. It's a use. So my ontological practice focuses on um, discovery. And if you look carefully at it, like just the word it's really uncovering up. It's the whole purpose of this book. So discovering questions that Lucy's already mentioned. Um, there's two places I wanted to use it. So in the in a public sector realm or in the domain of, of bureaucracies, at people dealing with policy and, and leadership, there's a real opportunity to look at critical inquiry and use the domain, use the cognitive maps, use the mental models to actually dig underneath policies to explain and help provide some light there. And the second way is to, in the leader within, within us, is to really, again, go into the subjectivity of who we are, how we are being, and to dig out the shadows. Look, <laughs> I like the idea of pulling them out by the neck and looking at them. Um, I like the idea of like being able to to actually pause and be with when we're the, the moods of humanity. Um, and the last thing I want to say is is about the book, and it's wide ranging. It's, it's incredibly wide ranging. It's deeply respectful to everything that's gone before, and it has the potential to reconcile so much in our world that I'm reminded to uh, reiterate, all we know is not all there is. And so the First Nations and Indigenous knowledges, the invisible, the song lines, there's so much that we could apply this to. And last, how to read it? Well, I've had the privilege of, of being in the, in the reviewer of it. So my suggestion is do not rush <laughs> Don't skim it. It's like one bite at a time. But rather than one bite of an elephant, which you can imagine has grey skin and then hard to, to digest, no, it's a sumptuous meal. Every course is, is deliciously presented with lots of different nuances. So please enjoy the book and use it. That's all. Thank you, Anna. I love the... The meal analogy. Thank you very much. Okay, over to 
another side of the world with uh, Aydin Yasemi. So he's a consultant, coach, and facilitator and runs some of the Ingenesis programs in Iran. Over to you, Aydin. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, it's a privilege to be here. Uh, thank you. Uh, I was also, uh, I also had the opportunity to review the book. And uh, for me, it reminded me of a personal journey. Uh, similar to Anna's meal example or analogy. <laughs> it reminded me of the first uh, philosophy course I took in college, and it was called Knowledge and Its Limits. And uh, so it was my first introduction to the world of epistemology. And uh, the professor told us that our mind is full of thoughts, like a box full of apples. And I'm going to help you to empty that box and uh, see which which are the bad apples so that all the box doesn't get rotten. So we ended up, I ended up uh, with an empty box for a long time. And <laughs> I didn't have any means of uh, distinguishing which were the good apples or which were the bad apples. So I couldn't find my answers in philosophy. And uh, but I came up with better questions. I stuck to science for a while. And then I got disappointed with science, then I turned into mysticism. And when I was reading the uh, meta content book, <laughs> it took me back to all that journey of, of uh, okay, where are the answers? Is it in philosophy? Is it in science? Is it in our intuition? So uh, what are the ways of knowing? And how do we get by uh, with all this uncertainty and the things that we don't know? But then uh, as, uh, Anna, Lucy, and others mentioned it's 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 a great synthesis. It's a great integration, and going through all the layers, the the nested theory of uh, sense making, it it really helps to give me. It it really gave me a way of distinguishing the rotten apples. And <laughs> so when you go through all those layers and dig your thoughts, and uh, I really enjoyed the book and. Um, I also agree with Anna that we have to go slowly. I'm going to read it again. And uh, it's it's very practical and, and very useful and uh, very life-changing and much needed in our world, uh, as Fedra also mentioned, with all the noise and confusion. So uh, thank you so much. And really happy to be here, part of this community. And I really congratulate Ashkan for this uh, Great work. There we go. Yeah, thank you, Aiden. Uh, thank you for extending these analogies. Now we have the Apple box as well. Now I'd like to introduce Marluce Te. She is a leadership coach. She's based in Sydney. Let's hear from you, Marluce. Thanks so much, Aria. Hello, everyone. Um, so great to be here. And uh, yeah, really honored to have this opportunity and share with you today. Um, I have some notes as well. I'm going to try and be as concise as possible. Um, I want to share with you over the last decade, I have, it, well, actually feels like all my life, but particularly over the last decade, I have been on this quest to living and leading a purposeful and meaningful and impactful life and really craving wholeness, deep fulfillment and intentional living and to bring all parts of me to life as a coach, as a mother, wife, community leader, as a coach trainer and through integrating the being discourse over the last four or five years and being part now being part being mastery um, and um, you know applying myself my my life my work and now reading um, through meta content I am really becoming clearer and clearer on how I can actually do that how I can live um, a fulfilling and intentional and meaningful life. And things right now are, I would say, significantly shifting and transforming. Um, my discernment, my responsiveness, experience of abundance and peace of mind and interconnectedness, like being part of this community in ways beyond my imagination um, in my life, like are just richer and deeper than ever before. And so 
that to me is to express my deep gratitude for this body of work, um, particularly to you, Ashken, and the team and everyone at Genesis who have played a part in, in putting this out there in the world and enabling and empowering people like me to be able to actually use it as a force for good, not just in my life, but in my coaching work and, you know, desiring to have an impact and make a difference in the world. And this richness is really literally changing, like the conversations I'm having, the depth and the level of it, my friendships, the love and connection that I feel in my with my family, um, and the effectiveness and results that I'm able to create. Um, and so just being a part of this community continues to be transformational, life-changing, deeply humbling, and just so inspiring to to share you know spaces conversations have rich and and meaningful um interactions and creating opportunities and partnerships beyond my imagination and um as i've had the privilege to start reading meta content i've not gone through and i think um kind of followed anna and Idin's advice to take it slow because i'm literally like the substance and the richness on each page and every word, Ashken, the intentionality behind it is just phenomenal. And I'm so grateful because I really feel like that meta content, this specific piece of work articulates a significant truth and restores value and importance and brings a harmony to the fundamental, multifaceted and all-inclusive parts of reality that I didn't even realise, you know, we needed to consider. And so for me, if you want to live in congruence and in truth and make sense and meaning in your life and understand how you can use and apply it to live a deeper and richer life you need this book and i'm i'm so thrilled to um you know use things like the nested theory of sense making so that i can be deeply discerning in what's my stuff what's other people's stuff where can i take ownership what is the noise where are the social constructs serving or not serving me what possibilities do i have to shift this so that i can really live and lead in a way that contributes not to my own life but also beyond myself and that to me is so powerful and so I just want to say thank you so so much for this work and this gift and incredible contribution um, of matter content and and to the world giving us the language the tools and ability to navigate um, our lives with true meaning and uh, I cannot wait to continue to read this in slow, um, slow pace, integrating and applying this to my life. And um, a huge congratulations to you. And thank you again. Thank you. Thank you, very much. Thank you, Malice. Great. All right. Let me next introduce John Williams. Over to you, John. Thank you, Aria. Well, firstly, I want to thank Ashcan for the effort and work that he has put in over the decades to be who he is and to be able to bring meta content to life. To me, uh, I have sort of dotted through the book and put chapters out, so I haven't read it in 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 order. But it's it's like it's the prequel to the the being source of power human being and becoming uh, because as Ashkan indicated that this is how he got to that that thinking and I realized that those books needed to be released because it's proof it's proof of how important meta content is because we all know what difference the being framework is making and the the profiling tools and the work that in the, in the, in the previous books so there's your proof what if we now apply that thinking? And this is the challenge in meta content. What about if we put that methodology out there into the world and apply it wherever, wherever one is, is trying to struggle with doing the right thing, you know, to be able to create, you know, I like, I'd like to send copies to uh, Jay Biden and Kay Harris at 1 Pennsylvania Avenue, Washington, 
um, one off to D Trump at Marilaga. Is is it available? Going to be available in Russian? Um, what about Hebrew, Arabic? <laughs> this is a world message. This is a powerful message. It, and and I congratulate Ashcan on the meticulous way in which he has put the work in, and and D Federer as well to to produce a well referenced book. So is that if it comes under um, academic attack, well, why why should we listen to Ashcan? Well, you go and look at the work. Look at the quality of the work. And and I'm very, very proud and happy to be part of this community and stand by. Uh, so, yeah, get your copy, get stuck in, and let's, let's spread this word right across the world because it's needed. Thank you, Ashcan. Thank you. Thank you, John. Yeah, we'll get those copies out to the addresses you mentioned. Next up, Caroline New. Go for it, Caroline. Thank you, Aria, and good morning, everybody. I really appreciate the opportunity to share just a few thoughts. You know, anyone who knows Ashkan will be aware how driven he is to contribute to the advancement of integrity in the world. And everything he's done in his life, as others have shared, has, has brought us to this point, but never more so than when this book, than with this book, Meta Content. So my sincere congratulations, Ashkan, on completing this seminal work. It is a marvelous contribution. I had the privilege of, re of proofreading this book a few weeks ago. And as someone who's never studied philosophy, not at school or, or at uni, um, I found it fascinating. Ashkan does, to my way of thinking, a masterful job of laying out all the key philosophical approaches and schools of thought, giving a wonderful overview of the history and development of different philosophies. So that, for me, was like education. It was great. Um, and along the way, he identifies the relative strengths of each approach and their gaps. And then he brings his solution for those gaps with his own very comprehensive sense-making model. On a personal note, hmm, the last two weeks since finishing the book and the proofreading have actually been very tumultuous for me. A couple of things happened that triggered me and I started running old patterns and going down a rabbit hole of my own making of overwhelm and anxiety. All of my shadows came out to play and I was pretty messy for a while there and there's still some emotion. But having just read this book, as I worked with my wonderful coach, I started to question some of my assumptions and I would get lost in my stories, but then recognize they were stories and start to unpack where they came from and ask what's going on here. And my coach Tanya was challenging my assumptions and I could hear the inconsistencies in what I was saying. And some of the bedrock on which I was standing has shifted. Deconstruction, reconstruction, just a little so far. And the key point I want to make today is if you read this book, read it not from a place of curiosity, but as Ashkan will say, from a place of sincerity, with an open mind. Because if you do that, it will change you. It will give you a way to shine a light on those assumptions, those beliefs, those stories that you tell yourself about how the world works. And you may start to find, as I am beginning to, that the very foundations of some of your beliefs start to crumble. I've read it once so far, and I've just started to read it again. I feel like I'm only just scratching the surface, but I'm excited to be in the discovery. Thank you, Ashka. Sincerely. Thank you. Thank you, Caroline. Um, yeah, I think you sharing is a demonstration of applying this work and then what it looks like for us to build a so-called better world, but each of us individually at a time. Thank you. Next, I'd like to introduce Kevin Holloway. Kevin, would you please? Thanks, Aria. Um, congratulations, Ashkan. Um, uh, like some of you that have worked your way through parts of the books, I've only got part way through. Um, and like John said, um, I mentioned this to Ashkan the other day, that um, this feels like a prequel uh, for me, um, and and in in the right order too, which is uh, really amazing. And as John said, you know, you've got the proof, and now we're going really digging into uh, this information. Uh, my journey uh, with ontology and the being framework, and in Genesis in general, and this amazing community only started just over two years ago, when I had a major um, personal and business trauma, and um, I was introduced. Um, to the being profile initially, 
and uh, and have worked my way through Thrive Coaching and now with a few of the other people on this call um, am doing the Being Mastery. Um, one of the words that's come up for me through this process and also in uh, um, been taken to another level in the meta content book is the my intentions. And um, this has been uh, raised and I've been challenged on my intentions over the last uh, year or so as I've got to get a little bit better understanding of the uh, of this whole process of this whole journey that I'm going through, but also through the resources that Ashgan and and the the team uh, are providing, and particularly with this um, this meta content book, by taking um, taking what I'm getting to understand to a completely different level. The the, the real um, thing for me though is um, it's at such a practical level. This book particularly is at such a practical level. It's uh, it shines that light on those pieces um, of our experiences, our storytelling. And if it's as um, Caroline said, I'm, I'm starting to question my own stories, which is amazing. And it just opens up something. The awareness just keeps evolving um, and at the same time bringing so much more to me. And I'm loving this, this process. I'm loving this journey. I'm, I'm loving the, the book is um, I'm going to have to get a bigger bag to carry the my reference, what I'm calling my reference books now, because they, they all, you just got to have them with you all the time. They're just so good to be able to um, look back on and look at a particular piece uh, in the practical sense, what uh, whatever's happening around you on a day-to-day -day basis. So thank you, Ashgan. Thank you to you and your team. And um, I'm I'm looking forward to, the continuation of everything that comes from uh, yourself and uh, and the um, the people around you. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin, for your words. Um, and we'll have to work on that book bag. So we'll get back to you on that one. Awesome. Next up, I'd like to introduce Wayne Stickle. Go for it, Wayne. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, g'day, everyone. Uh, it's, it's a pity that Caroline's left. Uh, I know Caroline very well. I've known her for a number of years and witnessing what she was experiencing there. Like, I'm I'm so moved and so fulfilled. So can't wait to talk to her about that. Um, for those of you who don't know me, um, yeah, my name is Wayne Stickle. I have a business uh, organization called Mighty Ability. Um, I personally live with uh, uh, disability, uh, chronic health condition uh, and uh, chronic pain. Um I'm currently in a caravan that I live in, in sunny Yapoon, uh, in central Queensland, enjoying the sunshine here, and uh, it's it's uh, absolutely beautiful. Um, I'm, I'm really present to the love that Ashcan uh, uh, has for me personally. I, I know that he uh, expresses that to the entire community. Um, I, I, Ashcan, I want to let you know that I, I really uh, resonate with it and, and feel your support. Um, in my own life... Um, I've really struggled with living with disability. Mostly I've, I've not been able to be with it. Um, I, I did everything to try and avoid being someone who was disabled and it didn't go well. Um, I had the privilege of uh, joining the, uh, the, the, the being uh, profile community and the, and the Genesis community. And uh, this is the, I'm actually doing being mastery now uh, for, for a second time. I'm reviewing it. And I wanted to share with you uh, a moment that changed my life forever when I was doing Being Mastery for the first time. I remember it was a it was a it was an August afternoon. And it was it was kind of getting warm again in summer, and I was lying on the lounge of my uh, apartment in Manly reading Being Mastery. Um, and I came to these words. It said, "Some of us have a disability or ailment over which we have no control." The point is, we're all victims. When we dare to choose to live, we must embrace life for all it is, including pain and suffering. So while we are all victims, we have the power to choose to stop victimising and sabotaging our ourselves. It was in that moment I became very clear that the meta content that I'd been accessing my entire life was completely inaccurate. My conceptions of being disabled had nothing to do with reality. And I was living in, inside a bubble that had me be a victim and, and living life from a viewpoint of being a victim. Um, those words, just that one sentence, after decades of trying to figure that out and make sense of it, uh, made all the difference. 
And as I go forward, supporting other people living with chronic pain, chronic illness and disability, making sense, making sense of that uh, is incredibly empowering. So, uh, Ashkan, I acknowledge your entire body of work. Uh, it's been a privilege to be part of it. And uh, I promise you I'm going to take this work, meta content, and, and, and share it with the world of people living with pain, suffering, chronic, uh, chronic illness and disability. So thank you. Thank you, Wayne. Yeah, what you said is really touching and knowing um, not only what you chose for yourself, but then what that means in the contribution to the wider community. Um, yeah, thank you for sharing that. Um, and, and with that, I mean, many of the speakers here today uh, are actually you know, in the field practitioners, right? Coaches, trainers, mm -hmm. consultants, making a difference to many others. Um, and I'm, I'm pleased to say that now the work of the being profile of the being framework has been used in over 53 countries. Um, and it's thanks to many of the, those of, who have shared and many others yeah, who are continuing not only to read this work, but as you can see here, practice it in their lives and then contribute it to the next people. Thank you. Okay, so one once more, I'd just like to share uh, the access. Uh, we, we briefly went through the access to uh, the, the books. So it is available on Amazon, on Google Play Books. You can feel free to go there, and I would recommend searching Ashkan Tashfia. It's the easiest way to find the books. Uh, but we also have some links in there. We do have some um, certain special uh, things for, for each of you who have joined, and you can also uh, purchase the things directly. Uh, but with that, I would like to bring it back to Ashkan to say any uh, final words for here for this section. Well, thank you very much, uh, everyone, particularly the speakers. Uh, I didn't know what, what you were going to say, and it was so touching and moving, and I'm so grateful to hearing um, all that you said. So... Yeah, so there's nothing particular that I would like to say. Uh, I, I, my hope is you grab a copy of the book, uh, read through it, and 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 see if um, you you find it valuable. Join our communities uh, community, and uh, that that's pretty much it. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. So let us complete. Um, I, yeah, again, I appreciate and acknowledge everyone, uh, all of you who are participating here, celebrating with the launch of Ashgan um, and also all of the speakers. So we are completing our official session um, and we look forward to next time. Thank you, everybody. Oh, so glorious mm -hmm. to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I have to leave. Thank you, everyone. See you. Mm -hmm.